Hey guys, this is Ian with Team Legit, and uh, today I want to show you my FG-36 with split elevons. I built this aircraft about a year or two ago, and it was my daily flyer for a while. I uh, certainly loved it while I had it, and I ended up crashing it into a mountain, and it spent about a month up there. There was a forest fire, not while I was flying, but uh, a forest fire was involved. It's now covered in ash, um, as well as dirt, as well as being just generally broken. Um, so this guy has not flown in a while. I was going to do a video about this, but it uh, was totaled before uh, before I got the chance to do that. And now I'm actually harvesting all the parts of, out of it, so I figured I'd make a video before doing that. So the unique thing about this aircraft is that it has four servos and four control surfaces, although um, the pairs on either side are typically together and just function as two. So why would you want to do this? Well, the idea is that it adds rudder control to a wing. Um, there are many ways to add rudder to a wing, and this is just kind of one um, method of going about it. I want to show what I did to hopefully inspire other people to uh, experiment with different control types and configurations. Um, I would call this a partial success. So how does this actually work? Um, well, all four servos are on the top of the aircraft, and that's for durability. You don't want them on the bottom getting uh, ripped out by rocks and such on landing. Um, but that gives a challenge because um, there's an upper and a lower control surface. And so how do you access them both from the top? Well, I cut a hole in the upper control surface to um, allow an upper horn on the lower surface. Um, now all the mixing to do this is just done in Tyrannus. Um, there's no flight controller on this aircraft although I did have an OSD at the time, but um, all the programming is done um, just through the uh, Tyrannus X9D. All right, so let's see this in action. Um, if I give up elevator, all four surfaces move up, down elevator, all four move down, uh, right aileron, they're gonna move right, and left aileron, they're gonna move left. So using the uh, standard bank and yank stick, um, basically everything's normal and you'd never know anything is different. Now if I come over here and use rudder, one side of the wing will open or close, which is pretty cool. And then what's really cool is uh, you'll notice the throttle's at 25%, which is idle on this aircraft, so that's forward throttle. That right there is idle. If I go lower than that, it breaks. You can see the response is very quick, very proportional, very controllable. This was a lot of fun to fly with. Um, the actual Tyrannus, um, by altering the uh, spring on the inside, um, I actually have my, my Tyrannus to have a uh, an unsprung portion of its range, which is about the upper 75%, and then um, below that there's a sprung lower 25%. And uh, most people are really weirded out when I show them my radio like this, but this is my main radio. I actually keep it like this. Although most models, um, of course, have no use for negative throttle, I actually um, have a number of models where I do incorporate it in one way or the other. Um, so you can have mechanical speed brakes like this. You can use the lower throttle to um, arm or disarm the aircraft, uh, depending on what type of aircraft it is. You can also do things like um, enable or disable brake on a motor. So of course with the mixes of this, um, everything works together. Um, you can have a little bit of brake and then still use roll and pitch and you know you can have rudder and you can still use uh, you can still use pitch or roll. And, of course, that's all done uh, in the Tyrannus. So if I just pull up my uh, uh, channel log here, you can see those are the, uh, those are the four servos. And um, you can see all axes of control operate all, all, uh, all four servos. So that was an issue of just going through the Tyrannus and carefully picking the endpoints and the midpoints and... Um, throws um, such that the servos would not uh, push against each other 
um, in a neutral position and they could go move through all their range of motions and uh, each pair of servos wouldn't uh, uh, bind on each other or push into each other. Um, not very much anyway. These are analog servos, which means that um, they don't have a tremendous amount of strength slightly off center, uh, which is great for this because if the surfaces bind slightly, the servos aren't gonna burn themselves out, whereas a digital servo um, might do that. It was a lot of fun to fly. Um, the yaw response was very mild, which I was surprised by. Um, so we'd be flying and, um, you know, in a flat turn, I would just apply rudder and, uh, you know, the turning radius might have been a quarter mile, you know, just, just making a flat turn with no bank whatsoever, um, what, which was disappointing. Um, what was cool is that you could, mix, um, you could mix rudder into aileron to fight adverse yaw, um, which you can't do, obviously, with just, um, just two control surfaces. So, um, you know, you do a roll and, uh, you know, adverse yaw gets the wing you know, a little bit out of shape, and um, instead of waiting for the fins to just um, naturally direct the aircraft back in the line, you could actually mix a little bit of rudder into aileron, um, and you could tune that while you're flying um, to get nice, you know, perfectly crisp rolls. That was the idea, anyway. Um, that worked okay, um, but what was really cool was, um, yeah, was the brake. Um, so you go up way up high, um, you know, pitch down, achieve uh, terminal velocity coming straight down, and you hit the brakes, and there was a very dramatic effect where the aircraft would um, noticeably slow down. I mean, in the FPV feed, you could see a good difference, and I was told that line of sight um, made a pretty big difference, too. Um, coming in for landing, uh, you could make a much steeper approach than you normally would, and then at the last second, or maybe um, actually the whole way down, actually, um, you could hit the brakes and, um, you know, you could kind of land in a smaller area than you otherwise could. So yeah, I'm going to now salvage these servos for another project, which will be sad because of how much work it was to set up, but hopefully somebody else out there can be either uh, inspired on this or, uh, you know, take up the cause and uh, build something cool.